All right. So good evening and uh, welcome to another chat evening with young learners and um, the young tribe that we have. And today we have uh, Ruta. So welcome uh, Ruta to our Indian evening and your uh, morning there. And thank you so much for taking on this opportunity and sharing your journey with us. We're really looking forward to understand as to how the difference, um, you know, the homeschooling in US, homeschooling in India, where are we, what options, opportunities we have, um, much to learn from you and uh, absolutely looking forward to hearing uh, your story. A very warm welcome, uh, everybody, and uh, over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Um, good evening to you all. Um, so yes, hi, I am Ruta. Um, I grew up in Seattle in the United States um, and I was homeschooled for the majority of my life. Um, so I'm gonna talk for a little bit and just tell you about my journey, um, but feel free to interrupt me by you know, chatting a question or unmuting yourself um, at any time. Um, I don't think I'm going to talk for very long, so um, there will be a lot of time for questions as well. Um, I know that the educational system is quite different in the US versus India, um, but nevertheless, I hope that this is interesting and helpful for you. So to start, I just wanted to give you a very high level overview of my experience, what I did with homeschooling. My family homeschooled because my mom was somewhat critical of a one size fits all model of education. I think she wanted to nurture my individuality, my passions. She wanted to tailor the education to who I was as a person. And she also wanted to give me a really deep and robust education, um, not a surface level education. So ultimately it was um, about creating a holistic and empowering educational experience. Um, where I, as a unique person, as an individual, would be able to kind of thrive and grow. So I'm so grateful for that. And I think that was um, the philosophy, the thinking behind um, why we chose to homeschool. Um, I was homeschooled for first grade. I was partially homeschooled during second grade for third grade um, and part of second grade. I went to a Waldorf school um, and Waldorf is an alternative educational philosophy. They use a lot of art in the curriculum and it really emphasizes the mind, heart and body kind of as a whole. So pretty holistic um, schooling. Um, so I just did that for um, part of second grade, third grade, and then went back to homeschooling for grades four through 12. Um, so for me, homeschooling was quite a diverse experience. Um, my mom is an excellent mathematician. So she was um, in charge of teaching me math for the most part. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. I also took classes with other homeschoolers. Um, so I was taught by teachers um, in certain subjects. I love to read. So I often studied history more independently. Um, and, you know, I would read books, I would write essays to learn history. I took some college classes in 11th and 12th grades. Um, and I also went to a wilderness school where I learned, um, learned about nature and I learned how to survive in the wild. And I'll talk more about that as well. Um, so I'll, I'll elaborate more on those. Those are just a very high level. Um, but the point is that I didn't just learn in one way. You know, I didn't just learn at home or just learn at, at a class. Um, I learned through a variety of different formats. Um, after 12th grade, 
I went to college where I got my bachelor's degree in sociology and political science. Um, I considered many different careers, um, especially, especially government work um, and the nonprofit sector. Um, ultimately, I decided to enter the field of human resources. Um, and I have worked in that field for my entire career. Um, so I specialize in employee training, um, team development, um, all within the kind of field of human resources. Um, I'm also getting my master's in this field um, and I'll be completing that degree next March. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a summary of my educational life. Um, I wanted to see if there's any questions or um, just see if um, the pace is okay. Am I going too fast or too slow? All good? Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, absolutely fine, Rutka. You can carry on with more of your journey. <laughs> great. Thanks. Um, so, like I mentioned, you know, I, I had a lot of different types of learning activities. I won't talk about all of them. Um, but just highlight a few. Um, so some homeschoolers, especially in the US, I'm not sure if it's the same in India, um, study almost everything kind of at home with their parents. Um, where, and that's not what we did. So I did some things um, with my parents um, and then some things kind of in classes and in, in different formats. Um, so in terms of math, as I, as I mentioned, my mom is a total expert in math. Um, so she taught me math um, in addition to many other subjects. Um, but with math, she just created a really unique math curriculum for me. Um, she researched so many different approaches to math. Um, and what mattered to her the most was that I understand the fundamentals. Um, she didn't just want me to memorize multiplication tables and equations and just be able to kind of do, do those steps. She wanted me to understand the logic behind it, you know, the philosophy um, behind why you do what you do in math. Um, so one of the things we did was we had these beautiful, colorful blocks and we used them to create patterns. Um, but those patterns were inspired by math and it helped me. Class me hoti, but a meeting you. <laughs> oh, I think that's <laughs> um so yeah, she she um really wanted us to use those blocks and that helped me understand um the patterns that are embedded within math. So that's just one example of a very um unconventional approach to learning math. Um, that's, that was kind of part of my earlier years, you know, when I was um, still learning the basics, things like those blocks um, were very helpful. Um, as I moved into kind of later grades into high school, um, I was studying geometry. Um, and if you remember geometry, um, there's a lot of different theorems in geometry, such as the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and these, these theorems have many different steps, which represent the logic behind the theorem. My mom ensured that I understood this logic at the most fundamental level. So she didn't just want me to memorize, again, the steps behind it. She wanted me to be able to figure it out on my own, figure out the logic on my own. Um, in general, she, she really emphasized that I should be able to figure out math problems and solve them on my own using my logic instead of being shown the exact steps. So that means that there isn't just one way to solve many math problems. There are many ways. And if you use your logic and your understanding of the basics, you should be able to often figure out different ways to solve the same problem. If I couldn't figure it out quickly, um, I would, uh, understandably, I would get frustrated, I would feel defeated. Um, rather than giving me the answer then, my mom would encourage me to sit with my frustration um, or step away and take a break. And then she would encourage me to try again. 
And often I, I did eventually, you know, figure it out. Um, so this process, um, it definitely helped me better understand math, but it did so much more than that. It was applicable in so many different kind of parts of life um, because that process, it taught me that just because something feels impossible in the moment, it doesn't mean it's actually impossible. It taught me that it's okay to be frustrated, that it's an inevitable kind of feeling. Um, and I learned how to regulate that emotion. So I learned that if I'm feeling frustrated, it's often helpful to take a break. Um, and it also taught me to have confidence in myself, um, to trust that, you know, I do have the ability to figure out difficult things. Um, even if something is difficult, it kind of just taught me to trust that I'll figure it out. I might just need some time to do that. So that's math. Um, I learned math. I think I also learned some broader life, life lessons in the process. Um, another important educational experience for me was um, the wilderness school that I mentioned. Um, it was called Wilderness Awareness School. It was a program specifically for homeschoolers. So we met every week um, kind of on a, in a forest. Um, we met every week and we learned naturalist and survival skills. So I learned how to make a fire, how to you know, move quietly through the forest without disturbing things. I learned how to gather edible plants um, that I could eat. Um, so those were some of the skills that I learned. Um, I went to Wilderness Awareness School from grades five through 11. So um, six years, this school really was my community. Um, I saw the same kids year after year. Um, they became my close friends and our teachers were also many of my role models and mentors as I was growing up. Um, and even though it was called Wilderness Awareness School, I, it, I learned about so much more than wilderness. Um, I learned how to be observant um, and aware of my own self. I learned how to be present with other people. Um, I learned how to kind of um, lead people in gentle and informal ways um, and how to build a sense of community among a group of people. Um, so even though it was kind of rooted in nature, there were just a lot of different um, other skills, interpersonal skills um, that I also was able to develop. Um, and I use a lot of those skills in my professional work. So I think I learned a lot of really good um, communication, interpersonal group, um, group kind of team skills there um, that I was able to apply later. Um, and then I also want to, I did um, a lot of conventional education as well, or, or somewhat conventional. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I went to classes with other homeschoolers for subjects such as Spanish, physics, and chemistry. Um, so even though these classes were with other homeschoolers um, and, you know, they were held at someone's house, they were very traditional in that we had a teacher, we had textbooks, we had weekly homework. Um, so that was um, a great way for me to kind of get additional learning um, in different subjects. Um, and when I went to high school, which was grades nine through 12, um, I knew that I wanted to receive a high school diploma. Um, so this is the degree that all students receive when they complete their you know, uh, first schooling. Um, and it's a necessary requirement for college and for many jobs as well. Um, so having that conventional credential was really important to me um, and my parents honored, honored that desire. So as a homeschooler, um, I could receive that degree if I followed certain standards that were um, kind of laid out um, by the school district. Um, so I had to register with the school district, 
And I had to make sure I studied specific subjects like English, world history, science. You know, I had to do all the different subjects and, and um, document kind of what I learned. Um, however, I did have some flexibility. Um, so I didn't have to take classes for all these subjects. I could do them independently. All I had to do was complete 150 hours of study for each subject over the course of the year. So um, if I was going to study um, math, I, I needed to do 150 hours of algebra or 150 hours of geometry. Um, the specifics were really up to me and my family. And so my mother and I um, kind of work together a lot of times to come up with what I would learn. Um, my mom really encouraged me to take charge of my learning, to be creative, um, to kind of plan out what I wanted to learn. So for example, um, I could choose to study world history however I wanted. Um, and when I was you know, 15, 16, I was really interested in clothes and fashion. Um, so I decided to research fashion throughout history. I read books um, and I wrote essays about it. Um, and so in the process of learning about clothing through the ages, um, I also learned so much about history and culture as well. Um, and this approach, um, it worked really well for me and it, it just um, taught me so, so much. Um, first of all, you know, I was able to pursue my own um, curiosities and passions. Um, and that's not something kids always get to do, um, or at least not to the extent that I got to do it because I could just create my own curriculum. Um, secondly, um, it taught me how to manage my time. So instead of having weekly assignments and you know weekly due dates, I only had one big due date. I had to complete 150 hours over nine months. Um, obviously, I couldn't leave it all until the last minute. Um, I had to do it over time. Um, so I had to create structure for myself so that I could manage my time and keep myself motivated. I learned how to um, create smaller goals for myself, which would help me achieve my bigger goal. Um, I think as a product of this, this kind of 150 hours, um, it just taught me not to procrastinate and I'm definitely not a procrastinator now, which is um, something that has served me very well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an overview. Um, I want to just pause really quick, see if there's any questions, anything like that. I'll, um, well. okay, okay, carry yes. on, carry on, carry on. Yeah. Okay, um, great. So I'll just, uh, um, I'll just. Hey, Ruta, this is Alta. Sorry. Uh, yeah, my daughter had a question, but she's too shy to ask. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, she, she, she wants to know what is a procrastinator. <laughs> oh, a great question. <laughs> um, a procrastinator, and many people do this, is um, just leaving your tasks until the very last minute. So if something is due um, Sunday at eight, eight at night, um, you start doing it. Can we mute? Um, thank you. Um, yeah, so if, if um, you were going to, if, you, if something was due at 8 p.m. on Sunday, you would maybe start it at 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then you would be very rushed, and you wouldn't be able to do it um, as well as you could have if you'd started it um, the day before. Um, but that being said, many people um, procrastinate and are very successful, and some people just work better that way. So, you know, everyone, to each their own, um, but I am glad that I kind of my education helped me do things more in advance. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wanted, uh, I wanted to answer her, but I feared that she would say, "Oh, that means you are boo." <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 
Um, okay, so I, I wanted to kind of just end um, by talking about some of the challenges and, and strengths. Um, so um, for my parents, I think um, one challenge was just the kind of skepticism or worry, confusion from family and friends. Um, and that was just because it was a very unique um, thing. Most people didn't know what homeschooling was, and they were worried that it would disadvantage me um, because it was just such an unconventional way of education. Um, so I think that was a challenge for my parents um, to just kind of need to have to, they had to communicate that to everyone in our lives and, and explain why I was being homeschooled and that I was going to be okay um, and all of, all of that. Um, for me, one challenge was social interaction. Um, I had I had plenty of friends as a kid. I was quite social, um, but I was not used to the typical social interaction of kids my age, especially as teenagers. Um, I just wasn't used to those sorts of social dynamics that um, kids um, were very familiar with when they went to school. Um, so that was really evident when I went to college. Um, so I was 18, I went to college, I lived in the, uh, the dormitories there. Um, and many of the students around me, they got along immediately. They started making friends. Um, they kind of formed these large groups. Um, and it was just hard for me to blend in um, because I didn't socialize the way that they socialized. Um, so it just, it took me a few months to make friends that um, were kind of relatable to me, um, whereas I think many other students more quickly. Um, ultimately, there was no issue. Um, I made good friends. I'm still with them today. Um, but it was a um, challenge or an insecurity um, that I had, kind of, especially when I went to college. Um, and another issue was just my own kind of insecurity that I wouldn't be prepared for the real world. Um, you know, I worried that being homeschooled might prevent me from academic or career opportunities. Um, I think I was uh, a little bit stressed out when we when I was applying to colleges um, because I worried that they might, um, you know, th they might not accept me because I was homeschooled. Um, this was an underlying worry, but it really, it really was not true in my case. I think um, it didn't prevent me from anything um, important anyway. Um, and I think it gave me many advantages. It was extremely positive. Um, I think I already mentioned some of the you know, positives um, earlier, but just to kind of summarize it, um, my homeschooling experience um, taught me, I learned how to manage my emotions and handle frustrating problems. I learned how to manage my time, create structure for myself, motivate myself. I learned how to recognize my own interests and passions um, and how to pursue them. Um, and I learned how to be more self-aware and present. So in short, I think um, homeschooling helped me become more independent and more true to myself. Um, and I think it was a very positive experience for me. And yeah, I think that's where I will leave it. I think all of us are so kind of tuned in that we suddenly have to wake up and say, oh, really? <laughs> Is there no more? <laughs> but yeah, Ajay, would you want to kind of ask the question yourself? I mean, it's perfectly fine if you just come online and you know uh, otherwise of course she can read the question or we can read the question would you want to ask her okay so uh Rupert's out there he asked yes. what would be your advice to new homeschoolers or unschooler okay uh like how could they realize their tr true potential um i think it would I mean, it would be different for each person, but I think um, just exploring a lot of different types of activities that may maybe you wouldn't, you know, try right away. Just, um, you know, 
you know, try a, a class here or even, you know, on the internet, like you can watch so much on, on the internet, watch videos and kind of explore. So um, I would say, I guess, go broad and, and expose yourself to a lot of different things or ideas. Um, and then try to be aware of where you have the most energy. Um, like what are you um, the most excited to do? What can you continue doing for a long time um, and not get tired or bored of it? Um, I think that that would be good in terms of recognizing your interests um, or, or, or kind of your potential. But um, I would also say that maybe don't be so one dimensional, you know, still do other things as well, <laughs> learn, learn other topics, even if they're not the most exciting. Um, but I, I think, um, yeah, just kind of self-awareness and figuring out what, what kind of gets you excited. What can you ask questions about? What can you spend a lot of time doing? And for me, I just, I like to read. I just kept reading um, history and historical fiction books. Um, so that, that was a good way to learn. <laughs> Suruta, when you said that, you know, um, not being one dimensional and trying different things, um, wouldn't it be easier or isn't it easier if you're in a kind of setup where you have options available? How does this happen, you know, for a you know, homeschooler or an unschooler where uh, we try and explore, we try and set out with our kids, but ultimately it's it's your home, it's your den. So yeah, is, is it more challenging to be motivating as parents um, or as individuals? I mean, how does, how does that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it would be um, because you have to seek it out. I don't know um, what it's like for you all. For, um, for us, there was a group like this um, of uh, kind of homeschooling parents. Um, and so, um, there was one parent who was, you know, very motivated to put together classes. So she, um, she had some contacts with teachers and she was really good at organizing. So she brought together like six to 10 kids um, for these classes in her house. So she would bring the teacher and she would host, but, um, and then we would go to some classes. So that was very helpful to have someone in our community um who did that for us um i think i might actually my mom is on here avantika um and i think she would know better how did she find all these different opportunities because she also found the nature school the wilderness awareness school that i went to she um she must have had a great way of of find, finding different opportunities so ie do you want to chime in Yes, please. It would be great. Uh, sure. You know, I was I was prepared uh, just to listen today and not uh, talk. Uh, let me turn on my video. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. So I I think you know I just uh, we uh, used to get a magazine called Homeschooling Magazine. It was published in uh, the state of Washington, where we lived. And uh, so that had research. And then uh, the local, uh, there used to be some weekly free newspaper um, that would just list kids' activities. So I would just you know read everything religiously and see what would work uh, for Ruta. And then, um, I mean, I spent so much time figuring out curriculums, like uh, trying to get uh, calling different uh, companies and then getting their curriculums, getting their approaches and then experimenting. Uh, so I just, uh, I'm like uh, certain curriculums, it took me a long time to find. And uh, uh, because at one point, Ruta declared that she hates science. So, I had to take it off the table for her uh, because I, you know the whole uh, idea was the lifelong love for learning. 
uh, because I worked in software before. Uh, I was working in Microsoft and before that at and And even if I had a master's in computer science, but every 10 years, the whole paradigm would shift and we had to learn again. So I realized that the content what we learn is going to be uh, helpful in the workplace only for a certain period of time. So your ability to learn, <clears throat> you know, that lifelong learning capacity that has to be nurtured. So you cannot hate any learning. You know, if you feel I hate this, I mean, very seriously hate this, like Ruta hated science for some reason. So I took it off. Then I looked for curriculums uh, that were just exper experiment based. So it was just, you know, you know uh, like, Internet, of course, is great to find curriculum. So, yeah, that's that's mostly it. Yeah. And I think we also. I thank you. I um. I think we also, um, did use conventional resources when it made sense. So, um, for high school, you know, I had to do this hundred and fifty hours thing, but I also had the option to take certain classes. Um through the school district. Um, so I, I did take certain uh, English classes, um, certain history classes. Um, I was able to take those through the school district because, and, and it worked well. Um, I was able to take certain college classes when I was um, uh, kind of in 11th and 12th grade. Um, and so we didn't only do the unconventional things. Sometimes we would, it was more of a blended approach where we could t custom, custom tailor the education to exactly what we wanted. Okay, Rita, so it's so super interesting and super inspiring, whatever is going on right now. <laughs> I just wanted to know what was your day like or a schedule like when you were about 10, 12 years old or maybe fifth to seventh grade. So yeah. What was your day like? So if, I, if I'm remembering, it was a while ago. Um, <laughs> but I think um, it started a little bit later. Um, and it was... At that time, it was a little bit more unstructured, but I think, you know, I'd probably be up around nine. We might start um, some studies kind of for around 10, 11. Um, I feel free to correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think it was around 10, 11, we would do certain um, topics. Um, I, think, I think it was probably like three, four hours of schooling on a given day, but it really varied because um, maybe maybe some days, you know, we were just in a bit of a flow and we would work really hard and get through a lot of material. Um, and then other days, maybe I was just, I would just be reading. Um, um, when I went to Wilderness Awareness School, that was, that took up my whole day on those days. So then that, that kind of um, was what I did. Um, so I would say generally kind of like a late morning start and a few hours of kind of um, focused study, but um, there would be different activities that um, would happen as well. Okay. But was that focus the all self-directed by you or scheduled by you, chosen by you? No, that was scheduled by my mom. Um, at that at that point, um, you know, she she kind of knew what we would be studying um, and would try to get me to focus. Um, yeah, I think as I got older into the high school um, years, it was a lot more self directed um, kind of time management. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how did you overcome your frustration or what kind of frustration did you have? That's a great question. Um, I think I had a lot of frustration um, with math um, because when I didn't understand how to do something and my mom would give me, she would give me pretty complicated um, 
problems to solve or or there would be more like a riddle or something. Um, so when I didn't know how to solve a problem, um, I wanted her to tell me how to do it. And I think that there's, I think there's a, just a kind of norm around when somebody doesn't know how to do something, we teach them how to do it, right? We tell them, okay, do this, this, and this. We tell them the steps. Um, and that's what teaching often is. But in my case, my mom would not tell me how to do it. She might ask, she, she would sometimes ask me more questions, um, but a lot of times she would just kind of tell me like to um, continue thinking. She would tell me to um, figure out these problems on my own instead of showing me. So um, yeah, I, I got frustrated because I didn't know how to do something and I didn't know how to figure it out in the moment. Is that helpful? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I have one question here. Yes. Uh, Thanks for sharing your uh, all the ideas about uh, your journey. From you, I uh, just would like to know a little bit like how did you realize your interest? I mean, you may have tried different things before you come to know that this is my passion and this reach that journey. What is the process that you have followed? And I mean, how much time generally took for you? Of course, it would vary from person to person, but just to understand from your uh, journey in this regard. Um, did you, uh, do you mean in terms of um, like my passion for my career or kind of more broadly? Yes, passion? I mean, uh, till the point you reach out that, yes, this is the, you know, my passion and interest I want to follow in long term, because you must have tried different things before you come to this conclusion. So in this yeah. regard, I was, yes. Yeah, I think, um, it, and that's a good question. There's probably not one process. Um, so I'll just share what I think happened. I don't even know if that's what actually happened. But um, what I, I think is that um, I really like to read and I really liked the genre of historical fiction. So fictional stories rooted in history, I could just, I could just take books and books home and just, I could just read them so fast. Um, and I think my parents um, really observed that, that that's, um, that I was so interested in that. Um, and so there was just kind of a discussion just generally, I think around, huh, like Ruta really likes um, history in general. She, she likes history. Um, so when I was, in 12th grade, so I was still finishing my schooling, um, I took um, an anthropology class um, and a sociology class in at the local college. Um, so I was able to take that um, as, a, as a kind of high school student. Um, and I really liked those topics. Um, that's just, it was just very interesting to me. I always wanted to learn more. I liked reading the materials that were assigned. That um, I just loved um, doing that. So I think I realized that that was like probably what I wanted to get my major in, um, in my degree in in college. Um, in the U.S., you are often encouraged to get like pick a topic like sociology, even if you don't know what your career is going to be. Um, a lot of people, they go into college not knowing what their career is going to be and they're ex encouraged to kind of explore um, and people change what degree they're gonna do a bunch of times before they're done. Um, but, um, so yeah, I didn't know what career I was going to have, but I did know that I really liked thinking about society, and culture and history and people. And so I decided to um, study sociology in college. Um, and I studied political science because um, it was very related. 
Um, at that point, I was, I think, becoming more socially aware and kind of understanding problems in society. And I wanted to um, understand more about kind of the, the problems in society and, and how to maybe solve them. Um, and so that's why I chose to do political science as well. Um, in terms of the career, it was a little bit um, accidental. Um, so like I mentioned, I, I was very interested in nonprofit stuff because I wanted to solve problems. Um, I um, want, thought it would be interesting to work in government, um, but I got a part-time job in college working in HR. It was just very basic entry-level work, but I got a job in HR um, just kind of randomly. Um, and I just, I really liked the field um, because it felt like a very stable career, but one where I could use my understanding of people, use my understanding of um, society and culture um, and use my kind of communication skills and all of that. Um, so I got introduced to human resources by accident. Um, I realized that it really, um, made sense with my interests and my strengths. And so that's why I chose to do that career because I felt like it would be a very um, kind of stable career. So I only made that decision in the final year of college. Thanks, thanks a lot. Sure that answered your question, <laughs> but. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Uh, so uh, how many, like, uh, were there many homeschoolers that time around you in US? Yes, um, I think there were, I, I, th there was a good community of homeschoolers where we lived. Um, I think part of that is that um, we just, we lived in an area that was a little bit more unconventional or alternative. Um, the Seattle area was like that. Um, and so um, there were plenty of homeschoolers. Um, in the US, many homeschoolers do it because of religious reasons. Um, so I think there were kind of two crowds within the homeschooling community back then. There was the, the religious homeschoolers and then the kind of non-religious secular homeschoolers. Um, there was overlap as well, um, but Anyway, that was kind of how it was. Um, so yeah, I, I did have a lot of homeschoolers around me. I think most of my friends were homeschoolers um, until college. This must be about 20 years back. Yes. Yeah, early 2000s. Do you have any other questions? Oh, um, there's a question yeah. about um, Indian history or American history. Um, all, all, all of the above. Um, I uh, learned American history, but um, I also had some books on Indian history and then um, just world history as well, um, e Europe and Asia. Can we please mute ourselves, all of us? Okay. Yes, Ruta, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I also... Um, liked reading about European history and, and a Asian history. And um, yeah, I, I liked reading about it. There was um, a, a book series called The Royal Diaries um, then. And it um, essentially, it would follow like a princess or a queen, um, but it would be written as if it was her diary when she was a child, like a teenager. So. Um, it would be Queen Victoria or Queen Cleopatra, but it would be it would be written as though it was their diary from when they were, um, you know, 15 or 20 years old. And so um, it was a very like easy to read story. Um, it's very understandable. But um, I also learned so much about history from those sorts of those sorts of stories. Yeah, I, I have a question for uh, Avantika, ma'am, and Ruta, if you can uh, think, well, 
add in as well. So as a parent of a homeschooler, uh, one of the, and this is our first year, so uh, one of the major challenges that we face is uh, where to stop being a teacher and you know, start being a parent or vice versa. Uh, now as a father, I'm specifically speaking, speaking as a father because this is uh, my, uh, a greater challenge for me rather than wife because rather than my wife, because obviously ladies are much better at taking care of kids than and at least me, I can say that. So, how do we? Uh, what have we done? Uh, what can we do so that uh, you know the the conversation is not always didactic? Um, and uh, you know, when do we start being a parent? If that question makes sense. Yeah, it it does. I think um, I'll let my mom answer that. Uh, hi, actually there was a background noise. I kind of didn't quite hear your question well. Can you repeat? Sure, ma'am. Can you hear me fine now? Yeah, this is a little better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Altaf and uh, uh, this is our first year of uh, uh, homeschooling our daughter Azalea. So uh, one of the challenges that we face and uh, I face that to a greater length is uh, when do we stop, uh, not, not stop, but you know, when do we cut the cord of being a teacher, wherein we are expecting, uh, you know, them to progress in a certain way and then start being a parent. Uh, my personal challenge has been that uh, if a conversation starts, like, like you mentioned that uh, uh, Ruta did not enjoy science as much, my daughter does not enjoy writing as much. So in an effort to make her, you know, pick up writing, it happens sometimes, you know, that I take it too far. And then the whole conversation breaks. You, 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 you touch that point to a certain bit that, you know, but for with me, and I think, you know, probably it's just a male challenge. <laughs> you know, my wife does it in much, much better way. But, but uh, so uh, when do I stop being a teacher and start being a father or start being a parent and then vice versa? If, if you can throw some light on that. Oh, that's, that's a great question, actually. Uh... I think as I uh, started doing early math and I have done MSc in mathematics in India. Uh, so, you know, I have, done, I have studied math a little bit. Yet, when I started doing with this curriculum, I realized that, you know, I'm really just another student of mathematics. Uh, I'm just 30 years ahead of Ruta, but she's a student of mathematics. I'm a student of mathematics and we are both of us are exploring this subject together. Um, and so I think that state that in the same, at the same time, you are a teacher, you are a student and you are a parent. And another thing I noticed that <clears throat> if our children went to school, then, uh, you know, some other person would be in their life asking them, uh, you know, what to do. And then that person doesn't come home. So the teacher at school stays at school and if the child studies or does not study, you know, it's, it's like the teacher has no way of knowing that, you know, at home. Right. Whereas at home, we, uh, you know, we know that right away, what's going on. And so in that sense, our children are more vulnerable uh, right. to us. You know, so I realized that I have to back off so much as a parent uh, and even as a teacher, you know, so because I do certain things, but I can the in this particular role of a homeschool parent, uh, I mean, you know, what they call helicopter parenting, that would just, there is just more way for scope. So you have to just uh, learn to step back a lot uh, as a as a parent as a teacher because you know that overdoing is there no i mean that student, the child has no respite because of this issue. Uh, so you have to really really uh, respect the child and uh, and and realize that uh, you know i mean the parent you know and we have like so many complaints about our parents and then we, I realized that, you know, my daughter is going to have same complaints about me. I mean, like, I, I think something is yes. good, right? <laughs> yes. 
so so and so you just have to uh, you know that because of that close proximity both roles parent and teacher uh, we really damage uh, very quickly and so you have to be so uh, conscious about that you know that uh, respecting their uh, in, in multiple ways and if that way i think especially if they say i don't want to do something then you have to really stop you know if the child says i don't like something then that don't like has a lot of undertones to it it's i mean you know the child just says i hate it but that there is so much going on in that child and uh, we, we don't know so only slowly as we work with the child you know introduce here there and try to figure it out then only we know the deep the details so I have to uh, i think this homeschooling teaches you to be way more respectful uh, of your children's space and privacy i feel thank you ma'am that that cleared this up so much for me thank you you are welcome <laughs> Okay, Rita. I wanted to know: uh, Did you face uh, most of your relatives? Were they there in US or back in India? In India. Okay. So, yes. how did you face? Uh, 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 were they very open to this idea of you being an unschool? Uh, sorry, a homeschooler and not going to a very conventional school right from the start? You know. They just didn't um, know what it meant. Um, you know, the, the Indian education system, especially um, if I'm understanding correctly, the Indian education system, especially 15, 20 years ago, um, this would have been even more rare. Um, and um, the system was really, you know, focused on tests and these annual tests. And that's how you... Um, show your progress that's how you get into college and, and and get a career and everything it was very um there was a very linear process to education and um i think they just didn't know what education would be like if i wasn't doing that um they were wondering like how would i have um how would i have the credentials i need for uh, the rest of my life. So I think there was more kind of confusion and worry from not knowing how it would work out. Um, and there are people in the e US who have that same worry, um, especially back then, but even still now. Um, so yeah, I think it, it was kind of a challenge to just kind of reassure people that it will be okay. Um, and that was kind of part of why I wanted to get a high school diploma. Um, when I was grades nine through 12, at that point, I wanted to have a standard credential that everyone would recognize. Um, and I, I knew I wanted to go to college as well. In your primary years, were you afraid of maybe a little bit worried about this or did the entire system, the way you were, uh, you know, pursuing your days and your entire curriculum, everything, so did that worry you a little that I'm not at par with children, the, the other children who are going to school or maybe something else, you know, in the social structure, the way you mentioned, you didn't have so many friends. And uh, in that context, did anything worry you in your primary years related to more about academics and, uh, no, uh, sorry, not academics, uh, related to, uh, in regards with more about criticism and, family, from the family, from the friends, back from India, and maybe there in US. So all these things, did that worry you at all? Yeah. Um, I don't think it worried me um, until I was about 13 or so. I was, I there were a lot of homeschoolers around me. And um, because 
all of my family was uh, extended family was in India. Um, you know, I, I didn't have, I didn't compare myself to my cousins, for example, it was just such a different um, world. Um, so I was around uh, many homeschoolers and people were pretty um, confident or committed to the idea of homeschooling. So I don't think I had a lot of worries and I did have um, a good kind of social scene. Um, I think I became maybe a little worried as a teenager when I started to realize that um, you kind of have to have like a diploma or something to go to college. Um, I started to realize that I couldn't keep homeschooling through college. Um, some can, some do, but um, that I, I knew I didn't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's where, um, I think that's also like an age where you start comparing yourselves to others and you see things in TV and books and media, um, you know, 13, 14, you start to compare yourself. And, and um, so I think I was a little bit worried. I don't think I was very worried, but I, I definitely remember there was a time when I said, I want to learn like conventional. Math. I don't want to do the alternative math anymore. I want to learn how to do things the way they learn at school. Um, so I did have those kinds of moments and, um, you know, my, my parents really kind of respected that. Um, so yes, I had worries. We're not very strong. I was worried about um, getting into college. I think that's where the stress was the highest was kind of 16, 17. Um, I was worried that I would not get accepted to colleges. And there were certain colleges that, um, you know, I, I took the standardized test to get into college, but there were supplemental ones. So there was the basic one, and then there were uh, supplemental tests on topics like English or history or biology. Um, and there was one college that I, I was really excited about, but they said I needed to take the supplemental test to prove that I kind of had conventional learning or had, I had kind of been in a normal classroom before and I, I could learn. Um, so when I learned that from them, I was considering doing those supplemental tests, but I ultimately decided not to apply to that college because um, I realized that they might not uh, appreciate uh, or, or value the type of education that I had. I thought there might be a philosophical um, kind of disjuncture or, or a misalignment um, if they were requiring that, especially because I still, I had a lot of conventional um, education on my kind of, on my record, um, but the fact that they were still requiring the test made me wonder if it was the right fit. And of, wow, making this decision was also so courageous uh, in its true essence at that point of time. Maybe I just didn't want to take another test. <laughs> uh, yes, maybe. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, in terms of social, um, at least in the U.S., there was a lot of worry about homeschoolers not having social skills um that was just um that was like a idea that was in society you know people would make jokes like oh it's like a homeschooler if somebody wasn't didn't have good social skills so um that was there um and, and i i do think i met some homeschoolers who didn't have a lot of social interaction outside of their family and they were kind of they did have a hard time interacting with other kids. Um, so I did notice that, but I had so many different activities and especially the wilderness school um, was such a good kind of group of kids that I feel like I, I didn't have that issue, but I still felt kind of like a out of water um, when I went to college because it just you know, it's, it was a, it was a bunch of 18 year olds who were all interacting with each other and who all had very similar shared experiences of school um, and the way they talked. And I just didn't relate to that at all. Right. So you'll be honest. 
Uh, Ruta, can you talk us through um, a bit through your wilderness days? I mean, how, what was the structure and, uh, you know, just to give us an idea. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ruta, just doing. Thank you, Ashita. That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the wilderness school, um, it was a it was a broader wilderness school, but they had a program specifically for homeschoolers. Um, I got involved with them because my mom saw an advertisement for one of their summer camps. So it was just a week long uh, kind of five days camp in the summer. I went there and I just loved it. And so she found out that there was a program for homeschoolers. So um, from ages 10, 11, 12, uh, I went once a week. Um, we would go there at, you know, nine in the morning. So we'd have, it, it was kind of far away. So we had to drive there. So we would go there at nine in the morning. Um, they had the, the kind of school owned, um, a property of wilderness. And so we would go there, um, at, to that wilderness and we would start our day. Um, most days there started by making a fire, um, and then um, everyone would go around the circle and share something that they were thankful for. That's how we started each morning. Um, and then, you know, we would have kind of the agenda for the day. Um, some days would be like a long, long trek. Um, some days we would split up into groups and some people would work on fires and some people would work on other skills. Um, some days everyone was focused on the same thing and we, we would learn how to like make baskets and it, the whole um, group would do things together. Um, so um, the days varied, but it was 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We had a lunch break um, and there was just a lot of kind of as you were doing the activities, whether you were hiking or whether you were kind of um, learning a skill, there was a lot of time to interact with the students as well as the teachers. Um, the teachers were all just like very, um, just wonderful people. They were very thoughtful, emotionally intelligent, socially intelligent um, people. They were, as adults, they were able to build um, a really good rapport with kids um, they were just very skilled um, teachers. And so um, I think they served as role models for a lot of us, like not just myself, but for a lot of the kids, they became these kind of role models who were closer in age to us than our parents were, but still very much our teachers. Um, so yeah, that, that was um, the school when, um, once I became a teenager, so ages 13 through 17, um, that school was twice a week and there were often, um, kind of longer trips. So we would do, um, three trips a year for a week at a time. And we would go all together, um, and we would, um, be camping and, um, kind of hiking or trekking, um, to a different place. So we would do those as well. Um, I see that there's some comments. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, actually, I, I don't think I don't think um, these are questions. I, I don't know about um, programs like Cambridge um, or, or any of those, unfortunately. Um, so maybe maybe my mom knows, maybe she can chat in. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I mean, I uh, I'm not aware of any programs because I was not seeking any programs per se. Uh, but at least in the U.S., I realized that uh, the colleges are very happy if your uh, child has a really good SAT score, SAT score. So uh, I think that's the only exam I made. Ruta worked very hard. And uh, so she had a really, really good score as a result of that. And so um, she got admission in really, really uh, top colleges that she applied to. 
uh, also in the us there is a group of colleges uh, and they go around the country uh, talking about what they do there is a book that says that talks about this uh, group of colleges it says colleges that change lives colleges that change lives and so these uh, colleges even the normal school going children you know they they're more understanding the student to teacher ratio is much less and um, all of them are very receptive to the homeschoolers because that uh, independent learning taking charge of your learning uh, that's very uh, you know important it's very valued at these institutions and so i think most homeschoolers uh, you know they work well with that kind of a scenario so that's that's my take on it yeah and i see there is another question for me which is any words of wisdom for new homeschoolers like us uh i think the experience showed me is uh the clarity uh that why are you homeschooling that you have to be very clear uh so for in my particular case um, you know i have done ms in computer science in the us and msc in india in mathematics so i have had that experience but uh, i mean a lot of formal education but i felt very hollow uh, at the end of it so i started working in software industry and so i felt i have done all these tick marks of life and yet where is my hollowness coming from so as, as i started searching i came across uh, shri arbindo's writings um, and he talks about the soul he talks about the more disconnected you become from your soul as children we have the connection but through our education we become more mental beings we just cultivate mind and so we don't cultivate other aspects of our being and as a result we get disconnected from ourselves we get disconnected from our emotions and uh, more importantly we get disconnected from our soul uh whereas the children have it you know the their connection is there so our parenting and our schooling it uh it cuts that connection so so i was very determined for ruta to not have that issue of feeling disconnected uh, um so so that that was my clarity so all have that clarity and so when you when other people ask you questions you will say oh this is my reason and yet they may not understand but you are clear so because when you are clear the uh, child feels confident and comfortable at the same time i realized that homeschooling is so alternative and the school gives friends and it's so mainstream so your child has to be on board so i ask ruta every year i ask ruta this question do you want to go to school or do you want to home school so finally after 8th grade or 9th grade she said you don't have to ask me this question anymore so i because i saw some of ruta's friends their parents were very strong home schooling people and the child actually was hitting the homeschooling experience and then i realized the whole idea is for the child to be happy you know i'm not doing it at the cost of my child's happiness because i believe it is good and i don't even know what it is but just i have a belief you know so uh, that is going to ruin everything for the child so i felt the child's autonomy is more important even at an early age especially when you do so non mainstream and so non tested and if the child is struggling and then the child could be very unhappy because you are too uh, bossy as a parent and as a teacher and you don't see that in your zeal you know because you are doing something exceptional so uh, I, i think you have to be present to everything that is happening and uh, always respect uh, the child's wish uh you know to what they want and uh, what uh, what works for them 
so otherwise they can actually your child they are so smart they exactly know even otherwise how to they know all our soft points right they can exactly get us and so and if we do something that they don't like and still on the surface because uh, you know we are their parents they have to listen to us they will completely sabotage homeschooling and you know they are just so smart in sabotaging the parents and uh, so so then then it 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 just uh, it, it, it just too much for you and the child so i think uh, be being mindful of the ground situation i think that would be always helpful does that make sense ajay Okay, yeah, I see uh, he's not, uh, he just uh, wrote a message. Yes, okay, all right. So that's my uh, response to that. So does any, anyone have a question? Yeah, if, if anyone else wants to go ahead, um, because it's it's a fresh morning for Ruta and uh, <laughs> a new day ahead of her. So yes, if we do have a few more questions, either in writing or if somebody wants to share something or, you know, connect with her, please feel free. Um, I have a question. Yeah, for Ruta. Hello. Yeah, Purvi, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Ruta, my question to you is that um, since you've had a, a different approaches to learning, and that has helped you immensely in all other areas also. At this particular juncture of your life, when you have decided for your profession, um, uh, does other profession also equally excite you since you've had lots of hands-on to different approaches to learning? So uh, my query to you is how uh, ease do you feel? I want to just listen from you that. <laughs> Um, um, of switching over or trying new things or you know it's okay even if i'm doing this i can also do this you know yeah um, yeah um yeah i not considering switching careers um because i really like the career that i'm in um I'm, i've invested a lot of time in it um i'm getting my masters in it um and the field that i'm in has a lot of opportunities to do different things. So I do very different types of tasks and, and work with very different kinds of people. So I feel like I can do a wide variety of things while still staying in my um, career. But um, in addition to my career, I think I, I do dive into a lot of other projects. Um, I um, and part of a nonprofit um, where I live right now, it's an educational nonprofit. Um, I live in a very rural area, a lot of farmland, um, and a lot of people don't go to college here or they don't know all of their options. And so um, I kind of joined this nonprofit um, and I'm the president of the kind of board of directors for that nonprofit. It's very small, it's, um, but um, that has been, it's not my career, but it is. A, a project that I've invested many years into. I use a lot of same skills um, and, and I feel like I've learned a lot about kind of the world of nonprofits and about managing volunteers and all of this. So I, I feel like I was very excited to do that um, and I was able to do that on the side. Um, I also am renovating my house. Um, I bought a house that just, you know, it needed a lot of fix, uh, fixes and, and renovation. Um, and so um, over the last five, six years, I've um, learned how to 
do electrical wiring and plumbing and, and learn how to just do a lot of kind of home renovation myself. Um, and so again, those skills of um, getting excited, figuring things out alone, kind of getting frustrated and then coming back to it later. I have used those in my house too, especially when it comes to plumbing. Um, and then at, at one point I realized that I, I'm not going to do plumbing anymore um, because I, I can't figure it out. But I tried many times before um, I, I kind of decided that I will leave it to the professionals. So um, I, I'm not thinking of switching careers, but I think I do um, approach many different aspects of life with kind of um, energy or I feel confident that I can figure out new skills. I guess that's the sum is that I, I do feel like I can figure out new skills that I'll be able to do the research and do trial and error and figure it out in the end. Okay, yeah, thanks so much. It was really nice. Thank you. Um, Ruka, at a later age and stage, when you um, had your family um, question you, of course, initially it would have started with uh, your parents being questioned. But once you reach a stage where, you know, um, you can answer. So how do you handle that situation yourself? Because um, in India, you have all sorts of families, you know, living in joint family or a nuclear. So it definitely becomes more challenging. So how do you think, um, you know, the child or the individual can handle or, you know, uh, any experiences that we can, or you can share that we can learn through? Um, I don't think I, I, I mean, I don't think I intentionally was trying to prove um, things to family or friends. Um, so I might not have, Great advice. Um, I think one thing though was just highlighting, um, well, part of the reason that I think people are skeptical about homeschooling is because they don't understand what it looks like and they don't see kind of the commonality um, between what, what they're used to and what homeschooling is. Um, so I think it might be helpful to highlight things that friends and family would understand, such as, um, well, my, my kid reads this many book, books each week. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a skill that everyone understands. It's like, a, it's like a milestone or some sort of progress that other people can relate to and say, okay, that that's reassuring. They know how to read one and they can read fast and they can, they can read lots of different types of topics and understand. Um, or um, if someone, if a child um, did some sort of competition and, and won some sort of award, or um, if they uh, created a project and they, they, um, you know, maybe they wrote their own illustrated book or they, um, whatever, whatever these things are, um, just because you're not going through school doesn't, you're probably still doing um, many of the things that kids in school do. Maybe it's a science experiment. Maybe you did it in a different way. Uh, maybe you did it at 9 p.m. at night, um, but um yeah, just just having those examples that other people would understand, um, and and showing them to family and friends, you know, saying like, oh, they, um, <clears throat> you know, some kids they they'll come like come up with a robot or something. They'll just they're unschoolers and at home they just made a robot or they wrote a software program or uh, they finished an entire online curriculum, um, all in one week or you know they they went on YouTube and they just started learning about space, you know. All these things can be shared, I think, with family and friends, and they're um, just, they're similar, they're relatable. I think that might reassure people. Yep, sounds good. So something concrete that we can, you know, kind of keep sharing and 
circulating it with friends and family. Not that it should be, you know, your responsibility or your burden to have to prove it, but sometimes it's difficult and, um, you know, maybe it just makes things easier to have a few kind of like shining examples. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ashita, I think I, I'd like to add one sure. thing Please. in this context, which is um, I made Ruta memorize poems and uh, so uh, when, uh, you know, we were in the US and everybody's in India, so especially her grandparents' birthday, so I will make her recite one of the poems when we would call to wish them happy birthday. So always, you know, something uh, that we did as part of homeschooling, which was natural, you know, it wasn't like at all, which I thought memorizing is, I thought when is very important, uh, especially the poems. Uh, but uh, so, you know, so always connecting with, uh, and then uh, Ruta was into cooking quite a bit. So then, you know, whoever came, uh, you know, Ruta would make something for them. And just so, you know, so they got to just be part of it, you know, if they were with us. So it's uh, actually, you know, your extended family, they can actually help you out with the homeschooling even more because the more meaningful interactions the child has with every relative, every family member, it's good healthy for everyone for the emotional health right so uh, that definitely yeah thanks thank you thank you you have another question so uh, I okay yes uh, let me see the question is um, do you want me to read it out uh, no I can see oh, sure thanks great, great. Oh, I see. Okay, so, uh, you know, to kill boredom. So, I don't think there was ever any boredom uh, because uh, Ruta would be in, into from one thing into another all the time. And uh, in the US, I think we were very fortunate to have this excellent TV. Uh, it's called public television. Uh, there are no advertisements. And they do, I mean, incredibly uh, talented uh, children's shows. So I think even they might be available on, uh, you know, <laughs> either on YouTube or on uh, their, like, you know, maybe uh, to Monali, I will send some of the, yeah, PBS, yeah, PBS, Public Broadcasting Service and amazing children's programs, age appropriate. So Ruta could watch as much TV uh, that TV and even I used to watch with her you know I also started <clears throat> doing that and uh, <clears throat> so there was always I and mean, Ruta was so much into crafts you know making beads then stitching clothes for her dolls you know all that you know and then cooking you know making jams so you know it was like <laughs> always like there was always stuff going on with her and she was very very handsome um, so th that part was there and uh, I quit my job definitely uh, uh, I was not working full time but I enrolled uh, as a, I enrolled in a yoga teacher training program which was a 2000 year, uh, hour degree uh, not yet yeah, 2000 hour yoga teacher degree so it was very demanding so I would have to leave her so uh, Ruta's dad would be there and uh, also after like in the US the law was that till the children are 11 you can't leave them alone at house but uh, after 11 you can leave them alone so so after 11 it, it was not a problem you know Ruta could just stay home by herself or have a friend or whatever you know and uh, but till 11, uh, she would go with me, like uh, many times she has sat outside as I went to the yoga class and uh, did her work there at the yoga studio. Uh, so till, uh, so, you know, so we had to be so creative, right? With Once you have the full, uh, what you say, you take the full for the responsibility uh, for their time, uh, but, uh, uh, 
so it, it is intense right it is like because you really are not ready for it i mean and you will make mistakes and so um, but you still i think i think the 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 clarity of the purpose when it is there and the overall uh, then you will say okay you know even if they go to school there are going to be issues you know it's not, no ride is free right i mean like so many children hate school i mean and so you know so some day your child is going to hate you <laughs> so it, it's it's uh, it, it's it's like that and you know the children have this favorite word right i hate you <laughs> you know so i don't know if ruta used it you know she's never been that strong a child uh, you know in terms of her uh, you know she's been very very gentle child in general so i definitely feel i lucked out but yeah so that and there was one thing i think ruta didn't mention but i think it is uh, i think everybody here will uh, really uh, like that that recently ruta just switched to her job uh, and she's working for an organization that does rehabilitation of prisoners once they are released from the prisons so it's a washington state wide organization uh, and uh, ruta do you want to tell a little bit about the organization yeah sure thanks ai uh, yeah it, i just started at the at the beginning of september um and it is a nonprofit that works with people who are in prison coming out of prison or or um helps prevent them from going to prison by um doing a lot of uh counseling around mental health and drug use um they also um provide employment um in in manufacturing and construction they provide employment for people coming out of prison um as well so it's a it's a pretty big nonprofit it, it, you know it's 60 70 years old um but a 800 employees so it's big um but um yeah i'm very excited about it because i have always wanted to be part of the nonprofit sector but i my job before was in more of the corporate sector um it is very nice to be able to blend the two so i'm still doing my job in human resources and employee training but i'm able to do it for um a, like for a nonprofit that i really believe in and they're really um interesting so yeah that just started i <laughs> i'm still learning the job great congratulations and do we get to um hear one of the stories for your dolls then if you remember <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that there are any like real stories i think they were just uh you know barbies and and other dolls and you just kind of come up with stories and and you know they would go on a trip or they would have someone over for dinner i don't know i spent a lot of time coming up with clothes for them or i would i was so close for them um with um you know with with paper dolls I, if you remember i don't know if people still have paper dolls but um with those you can make as much clothes as you want because you just draw the clothes out and then you cut it out um, and color it in so i made a lot of clothes for my paper dolls Yeah so did it happen that you had these things around you or did you ask for certain things and you know mom brought it in so i mean what i'm trying to understand is you know create that corner or um, you know that exploration uh, kind of a skill at home for them by buying things getting things at home and they you know kind of with age and stage they'll start indulging and kind of engage them themselves as you just did uh, you know so how does that work Yeah um I I think we definitely bought a lot of um products I think we had a lot of like art supplies at home um I think it was like the chicken or the egg like both they both happened simultaneously um I I think I liked doing that sort of thing I think kids probably um if they do it with their parents they're probably more likely to do it so i imagine that i was doing little craft things with my parents as well when i was young my grandma um on on my dad's side when she um knit a lot she was really a, a great knitter um and so when she came to visit she showed me how to knit and i think that might have been one of the 
first big crafts that I got into was knitting. Um, so yeah, I, I was interested and, and then we would buy supplies. There were also a lot of kits um, where it, like everything you need to do a certain craft would come in a box. And so it was, and there were instructions and it was just a lot easier to follow. Um, but I think we would do them a lot together when I was young. Um, and then as I got older, I would, I would do them alone. I think it was a little different before, you know, before phones and internet and all of that. Um, True, true, absolutely. Because much more complicated now. Yes, because my six month old runs towards the phone because that is what he sees in my hand and his sister's <laughs> hand and his dad's hand. So yeah, he feels it's an exciting toy. Let me just grab that and, you know, uh, be with them. So yeah, I totally understand that. Okay, so anybody else, anything? Uh, Manali, anything from your end or? Oh, it's pretty much, <laughs> I'm still soaking in some of the things which Ruta and Avantika shared. Yeah, you amazing here. No, it's, it's been absolutely fabulous. And uh, thank you so much, Ruta and um, Avantika Deep, you know, for coming here, taking out time and sharing your journey and your learnings with us. And we sure would love to stay connected and learn more and enrich our parenthood journey, uh, you know, much more with your experiences, through your experiences. And uh, yes, uh, so for the rest, we will have the recording um, of this on our uh, channel. So, you know, you can check it out and uh, till we meet next time, next month with another young learner. Um, Thank you so much again. And yes, uh, Ruta, I mean, you can connect with her, she says. And would love to meet you sometime next time you're in India, post COVID, as much as possible, as soon as possible. And Avantika Di, yes, uh, would love to connect with you once we're down there in Pondi. And yes, let's plan a trip to a drive meet to Pondi. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> would do. Yeah. So, yes. yes. Yeah, that would be great. So, yeah, you guys can visit uh, the Auroville schools. There are a lot of alternative schools in Auroville. Uh, so, you know, I think the homeschooling, unschooling uh, community, I think you totally uh, get to see uh, this whole, uh, how it is playing out itself here. I think that the trip is definitely worth it. Absolutely. Uh, I think the only thing that stopped us or stopped our wheels is COVID. Other mm. is... Um, we were on a roll. I mean, we love traveling and uh, it was, won't be too far until things really settle down in the universe outside. So, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's great to travel, connect and meet and learn from new experiences because uh, it's the beginning of our journey. Yes, yes, totally. totally. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank Have you. A wonderful evening. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.